Hello YouTube, uh, my name is Michael and this is my attempt at trying to do something productive today. So I thought I would share some slightly advanced uh, work workflow tips and just uh, basically how I use the Pioneer SP16 Torize. Torize. Let's get into it and uh, let's take it fast. So before I start, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, USB slot uh, for the memory card, it can also be used for charging your USB powered various devices like MIDI controllers, which is pretty handy to, uh, honestly. Like if you want to, you use this without a computer, let's say. You don't need a computer. You can charge your uh, controller straight from this. You can load your samples first from the, from the USB stick. Take it out and just insert your controller and play your gig. So this is really cool, I think. And I, I have not seen this uh, anywhere stated officially. So that's it. I'll take this out now. And if I look at this now, um, usually this is how this is my this is my default settings of the of the analog filters. I use the drive like nine o'clock. Just a little bit of it, almost, almost, almost non-present. You know, I don't, I don't really like it that much, to be honest. But it's there. <laughs> it's doing, it's doing its, its thing. And uh, sorry for my voice. Yeah, I, I got sore throat, and it's uh, difficult to uh, talk uh, for me slightly. So bear with me. Uh, anyway, mm, usually I keep uh, the this uh, low pass filter uh, at three o'clock, and usually the resonance around twelve. The high pass I usually keep around nine o'clock. It's uh, maybe I'll show you how it's. I'll show you how it sounds later. I found uh, the the extreme positions not to sound uh, that well. Uh, uh, I think it sounds better when you cut uh, the very <coughs> extreme positions of these filters. So that's one thing. Uh, uh, okay, if we look at my at my scenes here. You can see I, I use the same colors everywhere. Basically it's like this. I like it like this. I don't I don't like all this these many colors. So I created a custom scene that I use as a template. I will just quickly show you how. If I go to a new scene say here this is the default I can go like this the menu here file import and the first one blank scene dash one load it and you see this is it I have It's just blank, uh, blank tracks, empty tracks, and on uh, tracks 15 and 16, there is a MIDI out and line in audio in signal for 15 and 16 tracks or channels. I keep it like this throughout all, all my projects and I found it's a very useful to just keep it, even though I, I don't use it in this particular project, I still keep it there because I, I, I figured out that later 
like let's say I make some track here and I fill all the slots here, all the tracks. So there's no room for audio in or MIDI out. And let's say I want to use this project later in live set scenario. I have to then like delete one of the tracks, maybe resample two or mer merge some of them to make space for this new uh, MIDI channel and uh, the audio in. And I found it really, really like a uh, buzz kill. So since then I, I, I keep it like this, even though I don't use these, I keep this free in case, you know? Just that is this like little little pro tip from from me. Okay, uh, what have we got here? So I use uh, now channel number MIDI channel number six. It's on track fifteen, which is like quite messy, but yeah, uh, because historically I used uh, MIDI channel number six for my three or three here hardware. The free base 383 actually, my favorite uh, um, hardware clone of the infamous 303. Uh, so, so this is how I do it. So if I go to the to the track to the channel, you can see number six here. Also, I always uh, set the scale here is set to phrygian and also the root note it's the de by default it's it's I, I believe it's c5 which is high pitched too much high too high pitched so i i set it to c3 the middle c and uh, the scale to phrygian because we like phrygian right so that's it, I guess. Uh, yes, I, I keep these blank. I, I keep these like empty, uh, the LFO and the effects for now. Uh, but um, um, you know what? Uh, actually, I uh, when I see this, let me do. Let me. Let me just re. connect this USB into the Torais. Come on. Okay. Because you know what? I think this USB port is really, really bad when you want to use it for MIDI sync, MIDI clock. It just doesn't work. Therefore, I use these five pin DIN cables for syncing with the RD9 and the Eurorack and uh, everything. However, for remote controller for the CC, MIDI CC uh, control. The USB cable is sufficient. Uh, and uh, here, uh, let me just show you. This is very, this is very cool, I like it. Uh, basically, it, it's, this serves as like a DAW or hardware instrument controller for me. You've got two sets of these six controls like here, and you can set them to whatever you want. Usually I, I control, uh, currently I'm uh, controlling usually the Bassimilus uh, Iteritas uh, VST uh, or AU uh, plugin from Noise uh, Engineering because uh, it's a really cool plugin and um, it's, it's handy to have it here. Uh, yeah. Also, I keep uh, the velocity here by default on on this MIDI out because uh, it's uh, it's uh, the velocity is uh, like a separate channel for your rack that I use for CV control, CV modulation. Uh, 
you know, you know what I'm talking about. Um, okay, what have we got here? This line in, uh, yeah, uh, I, I have this effect here bypassed, you know, uh, Delfo. Uh, yeah, by default, I usually have a Ducker as the second, and uh, here I have, no, there's a filter. Often I have delay there, often I have distortion there, sometimes phaser, I like the phaser here. Maybe you can test it. Oh, not now. Well, yeah, this is how I keep it. Soft limiter on. Check type through. That's it. And if we go to the scene, what is going on? Hmm. Oh, something is terribly wrong here. All these samples are kind <laughs> <and> gone. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? What the fuck happened here? There are some. There are samples everywhere that I <laughs> that I have sampled or recorded. What the fuck is going on? Okay. Oh, this is really bad. I don't know what uh, what happened, uh, but I lost all my samples. You know what? Okay, let's reload the project. I uh, saved it before starting to, uh, sorry, starting the recording. This this never happens to me. I don't know what happened. Mm, this never happened. Uh, okay. Yeah, this will be better. Mm -hmm. That was very weird. All right, here's some. Here's some samples lobbed here. Smooth, jazzy stuff. This, this is how I like it. Anyway. Let's make a new pattern here. Like so. Oh yeah, why not? You know what? Not like this. Let's turn the velocity on here. And Hmm. What is going on? The repeat is not working. <laughs> something is like um, something is off here.
bitch is also not working. Oh man, this is, I don't know. Ah. Seriously, this never happened to me, never. Maybe the plugging in of this USB versus incoming MIDI, because that it, it's slaved out right now. It's slaved and there's incoming MIDI clock constantly from the Behringer RD9. And uh, when I plugged into USB, it might have clashed and crashed. It's that that's not how it should be done. Uh, it was like. A, fell from my from my side. I believe that's what happened. Still working. My user <laughs> pieces are working. This is strange. Let's let's figure this out. Let's see. Let's load some random project here. You see, we got real time problem solving. Indeed, is not working. The repeat is not working, even in other projects. That's strange, it's real strange. Oh wow, see, it was the incoming MIDI, uh, so for some reason blocking um, the internal sequencer functions, <laughs> that's weird, uh, it might be a feature, not a bug, might be. Uh, it's the uh, first time. It's the first time I've um, I just discovered this. So yeah, the more you know, knowledge is the heart of battle. Next time, I will know, and you will know. Indeed, it's working, right? So where was I? Okay, this is what I have here. Let's let's work with this. I want to show you my favorite trick. This is the called like fake side chain, fake side chain. So we got this sound here, sample, and the by uh, by uh, itself is playing like this. 
if I wanted to duck it, side chain it to the kick, I would use the kick drum, sink, sink it to the kick drum, right? There's no kick drum playing. You can already hear it, so. Okay. Let's say it like this. Okay. This approach, this uh, uh, workflow has one major disadvantage. And that is when I when I mute the kick drum. Now it's not so audible, but it 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 cancels basically the the, the side chain, the ducking is only present when the kick drum is on. And uh, in this case, it's not so horrible but in many cases it's like total basket we have a long sustained sound and the side chain stops it's a mess it's a horrible mess so how to avoid it how to keep the side chain independent on the kick drum but there's a way i found how to do this instead of Sinking it to the kick drum, we sink it to our, to itself like this. Okay. What we do here is we go here to the sequence, choose the half trigger, and insert the missing uh, quarter notes, is it? I guess. Eight, eight notes, I don't know. Okay. A little bit to the four, four to the floor. What happens now? This will trigger the ducking. And now there's no difference. There's no difference in this side chain effect. When I turn the kick drum on and off. This, this is very crucial. It's, it seems like a minor thing, but this is this is very very important. This is how you do it. Okay, one more thing I really love is long LFOs. Let's say we have this here. I have already some some settings here. By default, you have none here, sign here, trigger full, yep. sync off, something like this by default. Yeah. So, what do we do here? Let's say what do we have a distortion here and the ducker. So, let's say we take
let's say we take the tone here and the modulate to the LFO. So it's the first effect, is distortion and the tone. So you go to the LFO, FX1, distortion, tone. Okay, it's doing something. Decrease the depth. Increase the speed. Basically, it's not. This this, this is very misleading. It just, it's like <laughs> inverted. It's not just you you decrease the speed. You play it slower the sample. You increase the time, not the speed. The sync can be on or off, but there's one crucial setting here. In the setting, we set this not to trigger, but we leave it free. Oh. Now the LFO can run freely without be, being triggered and re-triggered by these triggers. Oh yeah, and we can keep it like rising, falling like this, or we can Make something like this. Or square. Oh, it's like this. If I put it to 32, it's like... You get it? I like using the triangle and put it to the longest, turn the sink off, do it like this. Yes, you like this. and make it subtle, like this. Okay. One more tip that I like using is the LFO in combination with the slicer here. So let's take this this long loop and we could because it's synced here it's time stretch M. Uh, it's like master tempo, uh, sync to the master tempo right now. So if I do this, it is playing in sync. Well, it's like, oh, okay, it's good. It's cool, but you could do more. We could, we could mess it, we could mess it up, we could fuck it up. So I will, I will turn on this trigger and go to the slice mode and let's, let's just, yeah. In combination with the repeat.
Okay. Okay, let's record something. Cool. Lovely. What can we do here? We got two FX slots. And the other another phone. A lot of fun here. Let's I love the phaser here. Now let's filter this. Okay, let's modulate this cutoff frequency of the of the filter. So here in FX1 we choose a multi mode filter cutoff, decrease the depth, set this to three, most important. Increase the time. Let's try now these different modes here. Let's try on. Yes, and that's how you roll here. All right, guys, uh, I'm gonna have to wrap this up. Thank you for watching. Um, like it, subscribe or share it, whatever if you like this. Let me know in the comments please if you if you want to see more. Uh, it will give me motivation to do some more videos in the future. If not, it's no big deal. And uh, yeah, I could I could go, I could carry on, I could go down several more rabbit holes and this video is already getting uh, way too long, so yeah, let's continue next time and have a beautiful day and be good.